They gave instructions in the dressing room. Do you have any questions? I got a question. You got any excuses tonight, Roy? Let's not ask questions like that. Let's test the gloves and go to work. Tonight, Roy. Let's go to work. Antonio Tarver uh, wants to correct the scoring of the first fight. <laughs> Roy Jones, in effect, wants to avenge a victory that was too close for his comfort. Let the fisticuffs begin. They don't want to wait for the bell. Emmanuel, have you seen that yeah. before? I love it. No, I've never saw it, but I would like to see it more often. Never seen it. <laughs> I got a question. You got any excuses tonight, Roy? <laughs> what a start. Oh, he's very, very confident. One thing Jones told us in a meeting yesterday, he said, you know, you never saw Tarver with his back to the ropes last November. That was because I was too tired. He said, tomorrow night, I'll put Tarver against the ropes. And one of his most effective punches sometimes is that counter jab of Royce. Whenever a southpaw jabs, he likes to counter it real quick by slipping and then shooting his own jab real hard. Now, they faint and face each other and faint again. And the crowd already rested, wonders what's going on. But Larry, what's really happening here is that you have two natural counter punters against each other, That's right? right? And Roy Jones is taking a more positive, aggressive stance, but he's not throwing any punches yet. Neither is Tarver. Neither man wants to go first. Finally, Tarver leaves. After about a minute, we see a punch. Yeah, both of these guys are really technical fighters anyway by nature, so this is only normal for them to fight this way. You have to remember that what made the first fight dramatic was the jeopardy that Jones was in. They, uh, a lot of it was this kind of uh, posturing and looking for position. And up, up, up until the time that Roy would actually go to the rope, a lot of the first fight was this way. Until Jones would go to the rope and say, come on and throw your punches, Antonio. And there were boos in the house during the first fight from time to time. And already Jones is much more active and much more effective in round one. That was the case on November 8th, when he seemed totally out of it those first two rounds. And trying to keep the fight right in the middle of the ring, where he has an advantage. Straight right hand upstairs, straight right hand to the body. The straight right hand won the fight for Jones in November because he needed to win it that way. Pecking to the body over and over with the right hand. But Roy's not going to the ropes at all so far in the fight. And I don't think he's going to be on the ropes probably at all, it's particularly early in the fight. If it does, it'll be late on. Well, if he has the stamina to stay on his feet and move, he'll do it. Now they're fighting in the center of the ring, and his hand speed and foot speed is being a problem for Tarver to deal with. Because at this weight, there's never been hand speed and foot speed like Roy Jones. Tarver hasn't gotten off really, and Jones is landing his right hand. So even though much of the first round was a phony war, posing and staring and looking, Jones has scored enough. He's scored enough to win the round, possibly, but he hasn't really been able to p penetrate or find a style yet that can penetrate through Tarver effectively. Tarver lands a right hand. Good right jab. And another Tarver jab, and Jones answers with a hard right hand to the body as round one comes to a close. All right, baby. That's what I want. Just keep the control. Mm -hmm. Keep the control. Put it in the middle. Keep the control. Keep your fights going. Keep your fights going. Okay? Yep. This joke ain't coming to you. Let's keep him going back. Uh-huh. You see what he's trying to do, right? Okay. Now let's get that jab working. But do me a favor though, you gotta stay low. Okay, now remember now, he's gonna try uppercuts as well. So when you get low on the inside, you gotta spin out of there. Okay? Let's get that jab working. Don't reach with the left hand yet, Antonio. Okay. Okay? Don't reach it. Relax. Okay. Relax, baby. Relax. Take us only round one. Let's get that jab working now. Okay. okay. Let's get the jab going. Keep him going back. Just keep dictating to him. You'll be able to land some shots. Way to work. Way to work. Use mm -hmm. the jab a little bit, son, though. Faint jab. Get your range. Get them big shots off. Uh -huh. Steel. All right? Keep that steel going, Joe. What? Don't give them much Yo, respect. Well, baby. Okay, when he's backing you up, stay Stop low. Stop using that word, respect me. Okay, okay, baby. So that was you. Respect then you. let's go out there and get yours. It's your okay. world, then go get it's yours, it's baby. Okay? Man, let's go get yours. Okay? Man. Same as the last fight. Ain't nothing different. Okay? He's just trying to bully you. Okay? We ain't here for that. Okay, baby? Stay low. Keep that jab working now. 
Jones's good friend Derek Smoke Gaynor is seated in round two. Between rounds, after listening to Alton Merkerson, Jones nearly craned his head all the way out between the ropes to listen to whatever it was Gaynor had to say. So evidently he has a lot of respect for Gaynor. It's interesting, Merkerson has been with Roy throughout his entire career, and that's really rare today. It means about going on to 16 years almost. Well, Roy Jones has been uh, very loyal to people who work for him and to his friends. He's a good man, and he's helped a lot of boxers down there in his town. And in addition, he's one of the few guys that continually contributes a lot to helping Joe McClellan. He's been the chief benefactor to McClellan, who has been in distress ever since his 1995 fight with Nigel Benn. Round two, very much the same kind of action that you saw toward the end of round one. Tarver stalking now more aggressively, more concertedly, and seemingly accepting the role of the leader in the counterpuncher's war. There's a hard left hand by Antonio Tarver. Jones tries to come back with a right to the body and a right upstairs and another right to the middle of the belly. You know, it's interesting. I'm watching Tava. He seems to still be giving Roy problems. Roy has not found a way still to get a sustained attack against him. And there it goes, Jones. And a hard left hand. And that is the first that Roy Jones has ever been hurt. Only Lou Duval ever knocked him down. Jones may not get up. And he makes it up. It's over. Jay Lady stops the fight. And Jones is still on Queer Street. And that's amazing. What a statement by Antonio Tarver. One big left-hand shot. He said, what excuses do you have tonight, Roy? No excuses. Alton Merkerson said, Roy Jones has gotten old. And you could see it because he was throwing one punch at a time and he was measured by Tava. And he never never found a way to really get through to Tava. And Tava just patiently took his hand and really that is, that, is, up. that is the first time in his career he's really been hurt. He's gone down before one time but there was a perfect left hand. Roy never saw it coming. Roy is out. And Roy may be out of boxing. And that's why Tarver wanted to be the counterpuncher, because he answered Roy's right hand with a perfect left-hand shot that knocked Jones out. There it was. One previous knockdown against Lou Duval. That was a flash in Madison Square Garden in New York. This is the first time Roy Jones has been hammered by a power punch. And it's cost him a fight. 